All right, let's rank Metallica's studio albums from worst to best. As always, we remind you that worst doesn't necessarily mean bad, and that our opinions can change as soon as tomorrow. We weren't sure whether or not to count Lulu, the band's 2011 collaboration with the legendary Lou Reed, as a proper Metallica studio album. But once we decided to do so, there was no question where it would rank on this list. Both parties deserve a lot of respect for trying something so different, but the end result, this plotting mess of spoken word pseudo-gravitas, is really hard to sit through. Next up, 2003's St. Anger, which again found the band bravely, but perhaps misguidedly, experimenting with the methods that made them the biggest metal band in the world. The high-tech production of Metallica's previous albums is replaced with something much more grating and shrill. Oh, and Kirk Hammett wasn't allowed to play any guitar solos. But the biggest problem is the disjointed and bloated songwriting, which ultimately wastes a big bundle full of tantalizing riffs. At number 8, we have 1997's Reload, the follow-up slash companion to 1996's Load, which was originally planned to be a double record. Everything from here on out is unquestionably worth your money. In this case, thanks to songs like Fuel, Devil's Dance, and the manic Prince Charming. But as this thing stretches past the 75 minute mark, it's hard not to hear some of the songs as leftovers. 2008's Death Magnetic marked Metallica's long-awaited return to their thrash roots, with epic, immaculately crafted compositions reminiscent of their earlier masterpieces. Make no mistake, it's a blast to listen to. It just doesn't stick in your head afterwards quite as strongly as the landmark records we'll be talking about shortly. After stripping their sound down to a bare minimum with their world-conquering Black Album, Metallica loosened things up a bit for their 1996 follow-up, Load, adding a dose of Southern Boogie to songs like Ain't My Bitch and 2x4. Mix two-thirds of this one with about one-third of Reload, and you've got an undeniable classic. Just about any other metal band would be proud to call 1988's and Justice For All their masterpiece. But the thin production remains a big sticking point, and the somewhat repetitive songwriting betrays the fact that this is the third time Metallica followed roughly the same formula when crafting an album. You can see why they shifted their songwriting style so drastically for 1991's self-titled follow-up. And while some fans understandably miss the thrash riffs and complex song structures that made them metal pioneers, the 80 bajillion or so new fans who followed Metallica into more straight-ahead hard rock territory are unquestionably right about the power of songs like Enter Sandman and Sad But True. We've now arrived at a tight, three-way horse race between undisputed masterpieces. 1984's Ride the Lightning could easily top this list with Metallica confidently and dramatically expanding the sound of their debut album, which itself was barely a year old at the time, on the pummeling Creeping Death, their dramatic For Whom the Bell Tolls, and their terrifically warped version of a power ballad, Fade to Black. By comparison, 1983's Kill 'Em All seems a bit raw and unhinged, but in this case, that's not a bad thing at all. Unlike St. Anger, this time around the dazzling combination of speed and precision on songs like Hit the Lights and Jump in the Fire hits even harder thanks to the relative lack of production. 1986's Master of Puppets stands atop our list. It may not have matched the big steps forward made by their first two albums, but this time out, Metallica refined what they had already proved they could do in the sharpest and most powerful ways imaginable. There's not a wasted second on any of its eight songs, and although it would take another half decade for the world to realize it, in reality this, and not the Black Album, is the record that made them the still reigning kings of heavy metal. That's it for today. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page to see more great videos. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and check out more of the best in classic rock coverage on ultimateclassicrock.com.